Good morning and welcome back to my kitchen. I have had the summer off with the kids and Emma. We've had an amazing holiday. I've written some new recipes for you and I am ready to go. The next five weeks is all about baking. Baking is something in Britain we absolutely love. We've taken it to our hearts. British Bake Off probably about to start very soon, if not already going. So we're all a bit baking mad at the minute. So here we go. The first recipe I'm gonna share with you today is a lovely garlic bread. Now, my son Tom absolutely loves garlic bread. If there isn't garlic bread somewhere in a meal, he's a little disappointed. So I thought I would make one like no other. So I have got 500 grams of strong flour. I have got seven grams of yeast. I have got 10 grams of salt. I have got 325 grams of water. I've got a little bit of yogurt and we are ready to go. Now, these ingredients together will make a wonderful loaf of bread. Now, in with our dried yeast, I'm gonna put that at one side of the bowl because I don't want the salt to touch the yeast, okay? It's dried yeast. Um, if you're using fresh, use twice as much. So I've got seven grams dry, use 14 to 15 grams of fresh. 10 grams of salt over to one side, so away from the yeast because we don't wanna get distracted and we don't want the yeast to get killed by the salt. Now, a little bit of yogurt, plain yogurt, not strawberry, <laughs> um, will help with the richness of the bread and just give it a little soft note to it, really. You don't have to add it if you don't want to. And if you were trying to sort of produce a, a plant-based version of this, obviously you wouldn't put, you would put plant-based yogurt in there or can the yogurt and put a splash of olive oil in. And obviously with the butter, you would use a plant-based butter. So it's uh, all good. So we'll blend that all together. Okay. And right, just put that to one side. Now, if you have any questions at all, and I know with baking, I get lots of questions. So post them in the comments below. I'm here to help. Right, in with the water. Now, I always add about three quarters of the water to begin with because the environment that you're in will dictate how much water goes in there because if the flour's warm, it'll swell up and it'll absorb more water. If you're watching this in the depths of January or February and it's freezing cold, then you might need just a touch more, but in with your hand like a claw motion. Can you see that all right, Emily? Yeah. And just roll it around. Now you could use a machine if you want to. I have no problem with that at all. I just wanted to show you by hand and then everyone can do it and you can make your choice. Now. I definitely need the water in because it is warm today here. And we just add that in there. Just roll it around the bowl until you have a ball of dough in your hand. Then, onto the worktop, keep the bowl, don't wash it because we're going to return it there in a minute. Just knead the bread. So one hand, using the palm of your hand, push the dough away and then pull it back. It's going to take 10 minutes, all right? until it is really nice and smooth and stretchy, okay? So just push it away from you. And what you'll find, you'll be tempted to add flour. Don't add any flour, please, promise me. Don't add flour, because what'll happen is you'll add too much, it'll tighten the dough up and it won't rise and stretch, okay? What you need to do is develop the gluten so that the bread becomes nice and smooth and stretchy without adding more flour, okay? Right, so once you, you've had 10 minutes and you've really sort of kneaded and spent the time, you'll find that the dough has changed. Look, can you see that, Emily? It's nice yeah. and smooth and it's, it's gone from a porridgey, floury mixture of a dough to a bread dough that's actually got stretch in it. And the only way to do that is to give it time and really let it knead it, work it, develop it. And obviously by using bread flour, which is higher in protein, which once you start to mix it, knead it and work it, turns into gluten and it takes it from that porridgey mess to a stretchy dough. Now, return it to the bowl, cover it and leave it to prove and double in size. 
Now, if you want the exact recipe, scan the QR code along the bottom and it will take you to masterclass.co. You will get the recipe there. But you can also now download my app. If you go to the App Store in um, Google or Apple, type in my name, Peter Sidwell or Peter Sidwell's Kitchen, and you'll find we've now got an app and I keep all our recipes, all the TV shows, we've got our shop on there, everything. And if you tick for the notifications, I'll give you a little message, let you know we're going on live soon. Right, let's grab this other dough. Right, so you can see this dough. There's one I made earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. Okay, and you can see, where's the best way to place to show you this, Emily? Just here? Yep. You can see the dough has developed, it has proved, it is nice and stretchy. I've sat a bit of olive oil in the bottom there so it comes out nice and easily. You don't have to, but that's what I've done. So, let's make this a lovely dough. And the way to do this is to stretch the dough out like that, turn it over, and we're creating little air pockets now. It's also knocking the dough back at the same time and getting the air out so that we get a nice, even prove, which is important when making bread. So, Flavors. This would make an amazing focaccia bread. You could just stretch it out and leave it to prove into all those lovely bubbles. You can turn this into a pizza if you want to. You could make a straight loaf of bread or you can make this recipe, which is the most amazing garlic bread. Honestly, it'll change the world. Can't wait for my son to get home because he'll want to eat this. Okay, right. So let's get a little bit of flour now. We're allowed flour now. Okay. So I'm using Carr's bread flour. It is consistent, it delivers, it is always a good quality bread flour, if you ask me. I'm sure wherever you are in the world, you will have a good quality flour there as well. Just make sure it's bread flour. Okay. So, I'm going to just roll that a little bit. Now you'll find when you're making bread, it stretches back. It just kind of you push it one way, it goes back the other way because of the gluten, okay? So you just have to be patient, all right? Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that to one side just for a minute while we turn our attention to garlic butter. You like a garlic bread, Emily? Oh, yes. Everyone loves a good garlic yeah, bread, don't they? And homemade garlic bread is Always better, even isn't it? better. So I've got 50 grams of melted butter, okay, ready to go. I've got three decent sized cloves of garlic. If you don't like it really garlicky, put less in. So that's Sacrilege, how can, you have, how can you have garlic bread well, and not have much garlic in it? I think if you're gonna have garlic it? bread, have garlic bread, <laughs> if you ask me. So could you add things, so like you've made like a garlic bread, could you add things like maybe like sun-dried tomatoes? And Kush could, yeah, absolutely. If, you know, pesto, some dried like tomatoes, whatever, but chili flakes if you like it a bit spicy. It's entirely up to you. Make it your own. If you've gone to the effort to make it yourself, you can make it the way you want it, can't you? So, chop the garlic up. If you're not very good with a knife, just use one of these. If you've got a little plain grater, just grate it. Just as easy. I've got all the new Masterclass bakery items for this season as well. So, if you like anything that I'm cooking with, Go to cookserveandenjoy.com, you will find all the masterclass range there. It, or scan the QR code along the bottom and it'll take you there. Right, garlic butter, done. Okay, so let's get back to our bread. Okay, we need to get this rolled out, stretched, okay, and ready to go. So people often ask me how much flour should I use when I'm rolling out, and, and I would always say, enough that you can move it around like this, yeah? That's how much flour you need to use. So just use it sparingly, and just use a bit at a time. Otherwise you end up in a massive cloud of, of flour, and it, it just gets everywhere. Okay, so, there we go. Right, now, what I'm going to do, I've got this pastry cutter here. So it's got um, as like a serrated edge and it's got a clean edge. I'm just going to use the clean edge for me. It doesn't matter which one you use. And I'm going to cut along there 
but I've kept, can you see that Emily? Yeah. I've kept it connected at each end, all right? So, I've been telling Emily about this recipe and this is the first time she's actually seen what I'm <laughs> talking about. It just gives texture really to the bread. Instead of just being a loaf of bread with garlic butter in, it gives us texture and I think it makes it more interesting. So, we've got our garlic butter, give it a little stir, and then we're just gonna brush it on here and lift the bits of garlic out at the same time, yeah? This can't be garlic bread. No. It's like the ultimate comfort food, isn't it, garlic yeah. bread? I love it. And it's almost like bad garlic bread, still good. Yeah. Doesn't matter how, it's yeah. just garlic what butter. Shape, what form it comes yeah, it, <laughs> just in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so just going to sort of lift out as much of the garlic as possible on there. So, what would you not, what would you serve your garlic bread with? Oh, I don't know really. I quite like um, a bit of hummus, dip it in oh, really? while I'm waiting for dinner. Oh, yeah, you don't like hummus though, do you? No. Weird. You're like the only person in Britain that doesn't like hummus. <laughs> right, nigella seeds. Really, or onion seeds, some people call them. They're just really savoury and they work really well. Okay, scatter them on. If you haven't got them or can't get them, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. But if you can get them, they really do up the ante on the garlic bread front. Parmesan cheese, okay? Or pecorino, if you want to use pecorino, or if you can't get either of those, just use a really good cheddar um, and just grate it on. This is not beautiful baking, this is flavoursome, because in a minute it all comes together and it just looks great. So don't worry about, you know, if you miss any bits around the edges or it, it spills over because we're going to mop it all up in a minute. There we go. Perfect. Right, now, what we do, can you see this, Emily? I can. Okay, so I'm going to roll from this side, okay? So we roll it up and push it away and roll it and push it away and roll it. Just keep doing that until you end up with this beautiful loaf. Pull all those bits of cheese and garlic and all that sort of stuff in there. Don't worry about that. Okay, and as it proves and bakes, it kind of opens up and it lets the garlic butter spill out and it goes all crispy and absolutely delicious. So let's get a tray. We can smell the garlic all over here. Smells good, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> smells good. If I could only get the smell down the internet to you, I would. The tricky bit here is getting it onto the tray. That's the hardest bit of this recipe. So just lift it up, put it under your hand. So you've got it like that, like a little baby. All right, and then just lay it on there. We'll put it back to sleep, okay? There we go, right. So, let's just wipe this down. There, this will now take about 30 to 40 minutes to prove and double in size. Then put it in an oven, preheated 200 degrees. So quite a nice hot oven. Mine are AEG fan ovens, okay? So if you're not a fan of and you want to knock it up another 10 to 20 degrees, and if you're in a gas oven, um, the same, you kind of want it about gas mark eight. And what I would do is if you are baking in a gas oven, put a tray at the bottom and put a little bit of water in the bottom as you put the bread in. And the steam will help create a lovely crust on your bread. Bake it at sort of mid to the top of the oven. Um, obviously with a fan oven like this, put it in the middle, it's consistent, okay? What we are gonna do is a final little bit of cheese. There we go, because more cheese is good. And then a little bit of butter, just dab it around there, because that's only gonna taste good. And do it before you prove it, okay? Because then it'll stretch with the dough, okay? So I'm gonna leave this for 30 minutes and then I will bake it off for 30 minutes as well until it's golden and delicious. Right, this bread is ready. The kitchen smells amazing. Honestly, like, it's so good. 
And look, you can see, I'll just lift it onto the top there. Super non-stick. This is the vertical uh, bakeware from Masterclass and it's so non-stick. It's brilliant. Really, really good. Now, here is our beautiful bread. Now, a little bit of that garlic butter that was just left over. Look, glaze it up. Give it a nice little shine. How good does that smell, am I? Smells amazing. Better than any garlic bread you would buy in the supermarket. Not particularly expensive either, I would say. Not expensive ingredients, just a little bit of thought, you know, make it the way. And then just, you can cut it like that if you want to, but what you can also do is, what I do? Look, you get these wonderful little pieces that are perfect to dip into something delicious like hummus, but that is the most amazing garlic, parmesan, and nigella seed bread. Mm, that's good. <laughs> now it's time to make the most delicious marbled chocolate bundt cake, and it's gonna be glazed in a really delicious dark chocolate with a little bit of sea salt, just to bring out all the flavors. It's gonna be delicious. So, need to start with room temperature butter. Now, Butter, stalk, kind of the jury is out at the moment um, as to what makes the best Victoria sponge, isn't it really, Emily? You're a stalk mm. fan, aren't I'm you? Not, yeah, I'm I've not always been fan. butter, but I'm starting to wave the other way for Victoria sponge cakes. But anyway, so room temperature, butter or margarine is what we need to start with, okay? And then we've got 300 grams there and I have got 300 grams of caster sugar. Plain caster sugar. No coloured sugars at all in this because we're going to split the mix out, but we start with a good solid base. So, electric, oh, electric mixer. Always gets me this, always gets me. I never get them the right way around, ever, ever. I've got a 50 50 chance of getting it right and I still get it wrong. Right, we're good. Okay, so we just need to cream this together. And this is about amalgamating fat and sugar together. So two very different textures, we have to amalgamate the two together. And that's done through force. And if you do room temperature butter or margarine, it will happen a lot, lot quicker. Okay. There's always a good indication. It starts really scratchy because it's the sugar moving around and then it stops scratching and it just goes nice and pale and fluffy. I always used to use stand mixers, but I've actually moved on to a, a wireless, wireless cordless uh, mixer. It makes life so much easier for me. And the great thing about these bowls is they move about because you get handled. Good thinking, Masterclass. Right, okay, so the scratching sound stopped. I'll just turn it down a little bit. There you go. Hear me better now. Eggs. Five medium free range eggs. We're going to add them one at a time. Okay? Very important that they are room temperature when baking because eggs are more elastic when they are at room temperature. When they're cold, they're much tighter and they don't allow that stretch and that lift, and that's why we're adding eggs into this. So one at a time, and you don't add the next egg until it's fully incorporated. You're a dump it all in and go, aren't you? You just chuck everything in, don't you? Yeah. Such a lazy baker, aren't you? Yeah. One at a time, it's really important. To make the perfect Victoria sponge for me, it's about sugar butter, cream, eggs, and then finally the flour. So you don't want to overwork the gluten. I love a bit of coffee. Sure. You'll have to come this side of the counter. You can't do bake off competitions behind the camera, Emily. So, two more eggs to go. There we go. Eggs start to split from the butter and sugar. You've added it too quickly. 
So if you dumped all five in there all at once, it will curdle. So it's about what you're trying to do is amalgamate and get the egg into this fat and sugar mixture and you've got to do it slowly. And if you overwhelm it, it won't work. Can you recover it? If yeah, a little bit of flour added to it will pull it back. What I would keep going basically and get your flour in as quickly as possible and it should bring it back. You see that mixture all right? Yeah. Yeah? It's nice and pale, light and fluffy. Do you bake cakes lots in Spain, Carlos? Uh, I don't. No, I know you don't. <laughs> I don't think... Uh, like Do you have that baking culture? No, no, we don't have baking, like on terms of cakes. Yeah. We have something like uh, pastry, more like mm. buñuelos and things yeah. like that. So, self-raising flour, I've got 300 grams. Now, we had a conversation about this earlier today. Now, because people watch this show all over the world, not everyone can get self-raising flour. So I'm going to ask Carlos if he'll put a recipe down the side here and it'll give you a ratio of all-purpose plain flour and baking powder to achieve what we call in the UK self-raising flour. All right? So in we go. Don't be tempted to add a little bit and then mix it. Add it all in, okay? And then we mix because we do not want to develop gluten in this. All we want to do is mix it together. So nice and gentle, slow speed, and get that flour in. And the minute all the white flour is gone, stop. There we go, done. Now, if you have any questions at all, please do post them in the comments below. And if you want today's recipe, scan the QR code along the bottom. It will take you to masterclass.co website and you'll get it there. Okay, so we're now gonna move to a metal spoon, all right? And I'm just gonna bring that last little bit in. Now, to make this marbled, we're gonna need to split it, okay, into two amounts. I'm first gonna add my vanilla. My top tip for baking is don't scrimp on vanilla. Do not use ex, uh, extract. extract. You No, essence. Don't use essence. That's chemical. Use extract that's real. Okay. Something I've never, I've never added vanilla to my cake. Have you not? Well, this is all about a masterclass in baking, Emily. Mm, learn something new every day. Vanilla. Well, it just, it, you know, it just brings... It's just a beautiful ingredient to use wherever possible, if you ask me. Okay, so let's mix that. Now, we're gonna split this cake out because we want half of it chocolate, half of it vanilla. So, let's take half of it, do it by eye, be all right. There we go. Okay, so, put that vanilla to one side, let's make this chocolate. Now, cocoa powder, always tends to dry out your mixture. So when you're adding a little bit to it, what I always do is add a little bit of milk as well because it, it tends to suck the moisture out of your cake. And I'm using one of these really new little sieves from Masterclass on their bakery range that's just come out this autumn and it's perfect for this job to be honest because it just gets those lumps out that always seem to find their way into cocoa powder. There we go. And by adding this amount of cocoa powder, you've changed the dynamic on the recipe. So we now need to counter that by adding a touch of milk. Okay, so a little bit of milk, and that will just kind of get it back to where we need it to be. And then just run a spatula around the edge, bring that white mixture in, and then start to stir it. But we don't want to stir it too much, we want to be quite quick because otherwise we'll develop the gluten and we do not want that. Gluten is our enemy when it comes to cakes. Breads, we love it. Cakes, not so much. So there we go, we've got our two mixtures, all right? I've got a bunt in here. So this is one of the masterclass ones. Um, you can get all kinds of different shapes, sizes, patterns, you name it. I've just gone for the basic today. So, are, we, are you ready, Emily? So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop a bit of chocolate there, a little bit there, and then I'm gonna take some of the vanilla, 
and I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that one there. And it's what you don't want it to do. You want both cake mixtures to be the same texture because we're then just going to add a little bit of that there on top of the vanilla. And then grab some vanilla again and I'll pop that there. Don't be too regimented about it, just whack it in because it'll be all right, I promise you. All right? Once it's in the oven, that's when it'll start to sort of mix together. Now, a little bit on top of that vanilla, bit there, bit there. That'll do. Now, Here's where we marble it. Now, I've got a little wooden cocktail stick here, kebab stick. All I'm gonna do, can you see this all right, Emily? Yeah. I'm gonna run it round like that, okay? But the idea is not to overmix it, because if you overmix it, it just becomes light brown, okay? So what you want to do is just kind of Run it through like that a couple of times. There we go. And now the oven will do the rest. So we're going to bake this 170 degrees. It's going to take between 30 and 40 minutes, I would say. But what I will do at 30 minutes is I will skewer it. If it comes out clean, I know it's cooked. If it needs more, if, if I take it out and it's got some cake batter on it still, I'll turn the temperature of the oven down by about 10 to 15 degrees. Whack it in the oven for 10 more minutes until that skewer comes clean. Right, while it's baking, we need to make our chocolate mixture, okay? So, I am going to grab a little non-stick pan. Now these pans are actually recycled, they're made out of cans. So Masterclass decided to create a product that is beyond recycling, if you ask me, um, and it's the canned pan range. So if you're after a decent frying pan and you wanna do your bit for the globe, have a look at those. So all I'm gonna do is just pop my double cream into a little frying pan there. I've got my chocolate and my butter. Whack it all in. Put it on a nice low heat and just keep stirring until you get a lovely glistened smooth and shiny chocolate. Okay. So the chocolate's melted here. I just wanted to show you, you don't have to use a double boiler, bain marie, bowl over um, a pan of, of water to melt chocolate. When you've got a little bit of cream, a little bit of butter together, look, you get this lovely chocolate, keep it on a low heat, use a good non-stick pan and be patient and it will come good. Okay, so there is my chocolate. Now, my bundt cake here, ready to go. All we need to do now, am I right to ice this up, Emily? Go for it. Yeah, is drizzle with chocolate. And what will have happened inside the cake is the chocolate and the vanilla will have just baked together and just mixed and you just get this lovely light and dark kind of contrast. You, and you don't have to use melted chocolate on this. If you wanted to use, you know, you could use icing if you wanted to, a bit of orange icing would be nice. Chocolate and orange is always good. But because I've got this lovely dark chocolate, I'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt, which for me works so well with dark chocolate, not milk chocolate, dark, okay? So just those little sprinkles of salt just bring out the flavor. It's kind of, if you're gonna use like a green and black 70% type chocolate salt to add, if you're gonna use dairy milk, no bother, it won't work. Okay, so there we go. And what I wanted to do was show you a slice, okay? So this is where I cut into it and I hope that it's all sort of melted together. So cut in, always a bit of a showstopper one of these cakes because people don't expect what's inside. So let's just cut in. And there we go, look at that. You've got the perfect marble flavoring going on through there. 
And if I turn this around, can you see that, Emily, if I turn it around? Can you see that there? Yeah. There we go. So if you want to make this absolutely delicious marbled chocolate bundt cake with sea salt, scan the QR code. It'll take you to masterclass.co. You'll get the recipe there. Happy baking. You're going to love this one. Mm -hmm.